So it'll be fun. We'll see if this thing is still as bad as I remember it. Gotta feel so airsoft. Watch out, I got BBs headed your way. Hey guys, Matt LaRosier here. And I'm actually joined by our friend, the spinning rat, Mr. Ivan the Troll. It's me, I'm spinning. <laughs> so we're gonna be doing something a little different. We've noticed that there's a, a trend among gun YouTubers to talk about and review guns that they think are really good or cool or in some way attractive. And um, we had an idea to do it a little different. So what, what's our concept here? So because there's like this underserved market, right, of guns that everybody's like, oh man, that's so cool. I, I really, really like them. They make you, they make you want to have them. We realized that like there's a lot of guns out there that like people shouldn't want to have because they're like bad or way too expensive or ugly or they just plain suck. So since not a lot of people are doing videos where they give an honest review and then tell you how bad a gun actually is, we figured we'd do that. So for our first little experimentation here, see if you guys like this kind of content, we picked a gun that is uniquely terrible. It is just bad. A lot of people talk about like, oh, you shouldn't put airsoft optics on your gun, and oh, it's so bad because you know, it's, it's not high quality, it's not durable, but believe it or not, there's some gun companies that just make guns out of airsoft gun. It is, it is just, it's unbearably bad. So of course, you guys may be thinking, well, what are they describing? Are they describing a high point? No, 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 no. No. It's much worse than that, believe me. Uh, the company that made these actually wouldn't even sell them in the U.S., and the reason for that is because they're actually made out of melty, melted down Happy Meals. And it's toys. all Happy Meal toys. It's straight ABS. Literally made of Happy yeah, Meals. Yeah, the issue there was it was understood that Americans tend to shoot their guns a little more than Canadians or Europeans, who you know because ammunition cost eighty nine dollars a gallon over there, they they couldn't get it hot enough to where the ABS would start melting. And here, where we actually shoot our guns, that Happy Meal plastic, it gets incredibly toxic if you get it hot from shooting it. So that was what kind of gave this gun this aura, right? People would talk about it as if it was high quality. And I'll, I'll tell you something, just being expensive doesn't mean it's good. So should we bring it out? Of course, of course, the gun that we're talking about is the H&K G36. Spe yeah, specifically this one, a la Tommy Built. I don't even know what to say here. It, it's hard. It's hard to pick where to start. So just from the very inception, HK was known for making very good guns, and evidently they had a problem with that. So they sort of went on a rampage where they try to make the worst guns they possibly can. Yep. So that people will then pay them a lot of money for a gun that's not a lot of good. Right. And it's interesting that they were able to take the G thirty six was part of an aggressive uh, R and D campaign to take a very known, proven platform, in fact, just this part of the platform, right, the AR-18, and make it bad. As bad as they could. And they did their research, <laughs> and they figured out a way. And so, I mean, where do we even start? So well, I start with initial reactions. The yeah. first time I ever held this gun, I was like, wow, that feels just like my Airsoft G36 I had when I was 12. And then I was like, wait. That's not a good thing. The airsoft, like, it creaks. The whole gun creaks like an airsoft gun. It feels like it's made out of Happy Meals toys. Nothing really feels well put together on it at all. And of course, it's not like I'm saying that because I'm a wooden steel guy, right? 90% of the guns I own are made out of plastic. Right. But this is like le more, more feels like a toy, feels unstable than 3D printed guns. It's kind of ridiculous in that regard. So I'm trying to like quantify I agree. The first time I picked this up, and it's not that it's light. It's no, not, it's not. It's not light, and it's not like it balances as well. It's not like yeah. it feels like you could throw it around like an airsoft gun. Right. It just there's just something about when you wrap your hands about it, you're like, oh. And then, I mean, of course, you all know where I want to go to, right? The trigger. The trigger is a uh, bad. Holy shit! Let's let's do this together. Okay, so I'm. I've gone through the first stage, and now I'm applying force, and I'm pulling through. It's long, and it's kind of crappy. It's like... It's a rolling break. It's, it's, it a, it's a lot like the worst AR-15 trigger you've ever felt. I th would say, I actually think... Because it's been a minute since you've held one of these, and let's do the reset. It's long. And it's long and it's mushy. It's, it's mushy. So feel that again, though, because it's been a minute for you. 
And the take up feels plastic. It's almost like the fire control group's made out of plastic. (laughs) Weird. Anyway, oh, it's so heavy. It's really heavy. So that's why it doesn't it doesn't really compare to an AR-15. It compares more to an AK, right? Where it has a really really heavy AK trigger, rolling break. And so let's take a look at why that might be. Oh, it's. (laughs) <laughs> the trigger interface itself is made of plastic. Yes. It, it's straight plastic. And what's interesting is the the Tommy belt, because this is a Tommy belt, let's yep. say that, yep. has more metal in the fire control unit... Than an actual G36. Than an actual G36. And look at that selector. Like, it doesn't... When you click through it, it doesn't feel anything like an AR. This is the most if clown you, shoes manic way to do a detent. It, it's very happy meals, and, and in fact, the, I believe the Chinese copied that on the Type One Ninety One that everybody likes to crap on. Yeah, I think that they went with that same sort of system, which is bizarre. You can see this whole like little—I don't know what to call it. It looks like a little little wizard staff. I would call it bad. That dances up and down <laughs> through every click for no reason, and then this trigger is just like this hammer. Look at the hammer. It's just a normal hammer design shape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a normal, completely cast hammer design shape. And we come in. The disconnector surface is so small, right? Despite your hammer like having a zip code. Yep. It, ju- yeah, it just feels like shit. So, there's that. But, uh, I mean, I kind of jumped the gun with taking it apart because I like taking stuff apart. But shooting this thing... Oh man! Like, uh, there's. I'll, I'll tell you this much: the irons. Look at how flippy and insecure that is. It is an upgrade that people do to these guns to put airsoft gun top rails <laughs> from like ICS or you know I don't remember what airsoft gun company, but that I think people figured out. They were just straight using airsoft gun sight assemblies. Right, because the, 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 the sights are terrible. Because look, your apertures are always the size of a football field. Yep. No matter if you're on the long or, or short distance setting. And they move left and right as, like, so much. I don't know if the gun is inaccurate or because we've shot this extensively. Right. And I think I was pulling, like, eight minutes. Um, of course, then there's the other thing, that the whole top rail yeah. like, moves relative to the gun. With your Phillips screws that hold it on, which that's, it that's good. inspires the most confidence, yeah. right? Phillips screws. People crap on kel for using, like, hex head screws to hold their guns together, and they're like, yeah. And, and they try to contrast HK with kel and then in reality it's like... Uh, well, uh... <laughs> and then let's talk about this charging handle. Oh my god, it's so bad. So you guys know, like, when you're in the shower in the mornings and things haven't, like, quite settled down yet and you just, like, boing! All right. That's actually what inspired this, is, uh... HK, HK of course, famously employed a lot of uh, bad Germans after World War II, the bad boys. <laughs> The war losers. And so, you know, HK realized, you know, in a more progressive, more modern world, like 90s, like, you know, women are like three quarters of a person at this point. It's, it's kind of a huge societal change. You can't even, like, abuse them and get away with it anymore. It's it's, it's a yeah. different world. Yeah, in Germany, they were starting to embrace the concept of a civil right. Right. They, Not they, fully. They wanted to be a lot more progressive. And mm-hmm. so they realized that, like, you, know, what would make a more progressive gun is if, like, grabbing the charging handle reminded you of you know, grabbing other things in the morning and then playing with it in the shower or whatever. Yeah. And you can even force it to maintain. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. People say that, and, you know, people say, oh, that's because the East Germans were used to the AK, and so they wanted to have the forward assist. But you lock the sucker in place and try to slap it forward. <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't. Like, it's just, it's just stupid. It's not a, it's not a great gun. And, and then, first, l- let me just talk a little bit about the Tommy build specifically. Um, I do appre- look. I appreciate what he's trying to do, right? He's trying to give people something that the company otherwise wouldn't give them. But like, 
what is that? It's so ugly. Yeah, it's kind of an with the little. Thing. And he put his little little Arabic script on it because he's so hard and so edgy, right? Like it. It looks dumb. It just looks dumb. You, there's nothing wrong with having very small, you know, little Easter eggs or whatever. Yeah, but like on a gun that people are buying because they want it to be something else. You kind of want to hide your markings, and they certainly didn't do that here. Uh, and then, of course, GSG nine US LLC on the bolt. It, it, nothing in this thing inspires confidence. No, it's not a it's holding not, it or not shooting. The best. I will say the one thing I do like is the way the stock fixes going outward. Yeah, but <laughs> when you fold it, what actually keeps it retained is plastic deformation off of this little hump on the side of the receiver. Yeah, like the whole stock just like sort of bends up over that, which is just just awful. Yeah, and then to get it out, you up and over. And it's just like the stock bending is what, what articulates it, which is like, okay, but it's just strange. Yep. I hate it. Like, you know, it's, it's a compliant mechanism, right? That's what no. you call it in, in the design world, is that's a compliant mechanism. And our compliant mechanisms are cool on Happy Meal toys. The other thing I like here is the the bolt hold open. Yeah, the bolt hold open is really weird. Which they added, they you know they added this thing to actually have a, a release inside the trigger hard. Right. Um, the original guns didn't have all that, but here's the issue: it works like once every four or five times. Okay, that time it held open. And then I take <laughs> take the mag out. out. <laughs> the only way to get it to reliably hold open is to physically hold it up. And you see, it was like fifty percent higher than it was with the mag. The mags of which the, the mags, of course, uh, not being AR pattern and being their own their entire own thing, and they aren't cheap because why would they be? And they're as wide as a Cadillac Coupe de Ville. Right. And they're, they're like, you know, they're, they're, it's not like when you hold a PMAG and you sort of like squish it in your hands, it feels like, oh, okay, I, I yeah. trust this. Like you can beat a PMAG on a table and the table's the one that's going to get beat up. And it's like, yeah, I trust that. Uh, holding these, they feel like a Happy Meal toy is, yeah. the, is the thing. It's like, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like good plastic. It feels cheap. It can't be overstated just how uninspiring. It just, and, and you know the, the, the thing that makes this worse is HK's you know prior work had been stuff like the G3 and the HK33 and the you know all that, that whole family of roller delay guns where holding them inspires I could beat someone over the head yeah. with this thing it feels tough everything about it feels like orcish even yeah and then they switch to this and it's like the it's like I mean it feels like an actual toy it's such like a hard shift in the other direction well let's talk a little bit more then about how it's held together. So, for one, could we argue that it... No, it's not free-floating. No. Right? Because no. it, it, it impinges slightly on this handguard. I think it is. You could argue that it is. I would say yeah. it is. I would, okay. Yeah, I would say it is. You have your <laughs> minuscule chicken little piston here. Right, which it's you don't necessarily need a thick like original AR eighteen piston, but I'd certainly want it to because it, it has to be a hardened part. Right, it doesn't inspire confidence having it be just just so diminutive. And you know, under the handguard, it's not it's not like there's yeah. a, a tube that covers this. Right, like you've got on some other piston operated guns, or the piston is contained right. in a tube to keep stuff from getting on it. That's just open on the G thirty six, like almost shockingly open. Yeah, so I am a little worried about dropping this on the top because a piston has to be very hard metal, which means it's brittle. And this little baby piston <laughs> doesn't inspire confidence. Taking this thing all the way apart really sucks. But the, the trunnion is like over-molded into the plastic. Right, it's a, it's a very interesting system that they went with design-wise, where it, you know, the, the receiver itself is the whole backbone of the gun, the up, right. upper receiver. And it, you know, it ends up containing 
uh, you know, all the tracks the bolt travels along, which has metal reinforcement, and then the sort of trunnion area that holds the barrel. I think there's pictures out there where you can sort of see a cutaway or like a, a see-through view of what one of these things looks like. And it's sort of, I'd say, deceptively simple. Because from a manufacturing standpoint, that has to be rather complex. Which, again, makes you stop and scratch your head because you're left there wondering, they had been stamping steel receivers. Right. How, how, how did this get them to a better place? And then I remember getting this thing apart. There's so much little... Yeah, it, 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 and of course, you know the, the, the same gripe that people have always had with the HK guns. The pins not being captive for a military design isn't isn't great. There's that. Everything just being uh, then, <laughs> so flimsy. Just, oh, yeah. You have to, like... There's a really stupid way you have to take the piston out. Look at that. Like that, that to me does not inspire confidence. Not at all. And there's your. There's nothing wrong with the interface itself. But yeah, that's the gun stripped down. And so I would compare this to you know one of the other 1.8 million AR-18 clones, where look what what really matters on a gun like this, where your barrel is free floated is the relationship between the trunnion and the receiver, right? That, that's where you get all of your accuracy, and that's where you get your feeding uh, consistency and everything like that. And, of course, you know, the, the second most important thing there is also your sights need to be... You know, there, there's, a, there's a holy trinity that needs to happen between your sights and your receiver, your receiver and your barrel, and then, of course, you know, then your barrel to your sights, right? right. It's, it's like a triangle. It's like the fire triangle. If any one of them is not there, your accuracy is gone. Right. And so we have a trunnion receiver extension, whatever you want to call it, that's just heat sunk into a plastic receiver. And it moves. <laughs> there, there, there is a little bit of movement. And maybe, yeah. that, maybe that's in the plastic, maybe that's in the thing to the plastic, right. but it, it you certainly... And you feel that. It does not inspire confidence. I mean, yeah, and you, it might be might be possible to show to the camera it's enough movement, and that's not barrel. You know, that's not barrel flex, so it's not right. the barrel itself bending; it's moving back here. Yeah, and it's because there's there's a softness there. There's a, that's, you know, a just compliant this, element, right? The thin the thinness of the plastic itself probably be tricky to show to the camera, right. but you know, between this barrel extension, which by all means is very AR fifteen, right? Like the wall here is like which is not a bad thing, right? right? The wall here is maybe a millimeter of plastic, and so you've just got flexibility in that. It's just how how it will have to work. The way you can get around that is a, a thicker wall or a flange or more extensive metal reinforcement. And at least as far as the G36s that you can get here in the U.S. go, uh, you don't get that. You do not. And there is other AR-18 derivatives that we can look at for how that could be done well. Um, and especially because we have this steel reinforced along the left-hand side, I feel like it could have been one machine component that just gives you... It longer. probably could have get been, but you know, then the thing that you get to is they were trying to maybe ostensibly save money, right? Or simplify. I don't even know that they simplify anything compared to their their roller delay guns. If they had just welded an AR eighteen or an AR fifteen barrel into the front of the of a roller delay gun and then made it take a star shaped bolt, I feel like they would have been in a better place because right they they already had the proven reliability, and especially with the especially with the G three. Uh, the, the, the accurized versions of the G3 were by all means the best of the DMR versions of the battle rifles in the big battle rifle wars because they, they'd hold minute of angle with ball ammo that, that they were specifically designed built built out to run but you know, to get that in an M14 you're shooting like three dollar a round or hand loads yeah. you know, really expensive stuff like the G3 proved out they could make a really good free floated you know, accurate rifle and then they switched you know, they, like they had learned how to do this. And you know what they did is they stopped doing it and instead moved to putting their barrels and stuff in Happy Meals. Yeah. So, and to exemplify the accuracy issue here, and people are going to be like, oh, you're repeating FUD lore, or you're repeating FUD lore, right? Because there is some FUD lore about... Um, the gun being left in the sun caused... Yeah. The gun being left in the sun didn't cause it to, right. to flex. I think it, it, it's it's not that the polymer itself or metal being in polymer was the problem. Which because that you, that can actually be a very good relationship, right? As we've observed, but it's you have a not perfect relationship here between your barrel and your receiver, 
and then that's compounded by the but, by the flexibility in the site. Yeah, and you know, the, the 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 I think it was Mr. Corral from Car, from Carl's Range. Carl's Range Weapons. Carl's Range. Carl's Forgotten, Forgotten Range dot, dot org. Yeah, yeah. That gun. Yeah, he he had done a video where he he showed it wasn't the gun heating on its side. It wasn't yeah. the gun just getting hot from shooting that would cause trouble. But if you picked up the gun and rattled, or you know, he was using the one with the old, you know, the duplex yeah. sight where it's got the magnified optic, and of course, looks way cool. That's just taller yeah. and compounds the amount of you know because the higher you get off this rail, one degree of shift this high off moves you a little. This high off moves you like you know because along the arc length that moves you like a quarter of an inch. And so he ended up determining, like, if you put your thumb and pushed on the rail, the gun hits in a different spot. <laughs> and so they sort of nailed down the G36's accuracy issue was, was the sights aren't tight on the gun. Mm-hmm. No, you can't tighten these screws down anymore to get it tighter, right? Those screws are in. Yep. That's how they come. It's just very, very poorly thought out in that regard. Okay, and so now I'm glad you said the word poor, because people are going to be watching this and they're going to be saying... Oh well, it's just because you're poor and you don't have an HK. You have a US made one. Like that's the problem, right? So, what else do we have? Oh, so we have the, the bag broke. <laughs> <laughs> we have the uh, the German version. Yeah. <laughs> this is the one that fuck you. <laughs> this is the one that Mr. Heckles Cox yeah. Ralph Heckle put his cock on. Mr. Harl Cobbler himself. <laughs> oh, it's so much better. <laughs> Y'all suck. All right, this guess what? It's the same. Yeah. So so this is the thing that we had thought is like we need to get our hands on an SL8 because maybe it's just the Tommy boats that feel like a McDonald's toy. Guess what? Guess what? The Resident Evil 4 sniper rifle feels like a Happy Meal toy. Yes. And they, do you know how to take the... Uh, t- I, you have to use tools to take the trigger dog off of this Of one. course. But guess what? It's even more plastic. <laughs> it's worse. There's more plastic. It's worse. In it. And it feels... the sa- I, So I will say, if I was going to have one of these, I would want this one. I would rather have the SL-8. Yes. I would have, because... The SL-8 is not pretending to be a good combat rifle, and I would have it for one bad reason, and that's Resident Evil. Mr. Resides Inside My Evil. Mr. Resident Evil President's Daughter 4. Um, and I would leave it exactly like this, how they fucked you. Well, so see, so this, is, this is the coolest thing about these guns, is, you know, there isn't a, there isn't a fuck you on the other yeah. side. And so then you look at the bottom of it... <laughs> It's just offset, yeah. and the reason why is you know the, the import. You know, Mr. Mr. George Bush said you couldn't have yeah. the the big Stindo mags coming into the country on import, so this mag is just a single feed position, <laughs> and it's offset because they're still using the regular bolt. Right. So it's just half of an AR mag set over to the left side of the gun, which okay, that's not the most insane way to do that, but like why? Yeah. And of course, from a standpoint of comparing <laughs> quality, mark of quality. From a standpoint of comparing the markings, you can see that the yeah. the markings are substantially different right. between the between the clone and the four the four real G thirty six. Yeah, I just there. This one has a certain vibe though to it. I, I like it. I mean, it, especially if you put like a, a, a scope like yeah. from the Resident Evil video game. The hit, I don't do scopes. <laughs> the hit video game Resident Evil four. Let's feel it. The take up on this one is much lo- and the trigger is yeah. way lighter. Yeah. Like it actually surprised me because I was just thinking of the. Uh... This is like the quality of this trigger is like a normal bad AK trigger, right? So, way better on that department. But is it a better gun overall? I don't know. Yeah, take a look there. So, you know, the, the interesting thing to see, because I know I've seen a lot, a lot of people who are, like, not familiar with the the SL-8 generally. Like, it, it, it uses pretty much all the parts that a G36 uses, and it's just, you know, it's just an import configuration. So if you're not familiar, uh, w- Wasser's come into the country, yep. and it's very similar. Like, the Magwell is single only stack single Magwell. stack, and, you know, they're, they're, they're like, they're sporter mm-hmm. versions. And, you know, the Norinkos came in with a thumbhole stock, so that's right. the reason they had... That going on before that got ruined for us. Barrel. <laughs> so it's definitely not the barrel flexion that you'd be able to see. Yeah. And if I hold it tight to my chest, maybe not as bad as a Tommy built. Not as bad. But it still moves. Yeah. Like, there's movement here between the, the barrel and the receiver. 
Maybe not quite as and much. And probably but... the mass of the barrel is going to like impede that slightly. Right. Yeah. So you're going to wind up with more accuracy. But that's not a function of it being better quality, right? That's right. a function of tremendous mass <laughs> holding it down. And you do have uh, some wiggle in the rail, maybe a little bit less. Maybe a little bit less from the, the, German, the German Happy Meal. Right. They, of course, get the better toys, so... <laughs> Do you think that would hold zero with a, with a peck? <laughs> I wonder if that would break a peck out there. <laughs> yeah. God. Dying Dying board. <laughs> so, yeah. So, guys, that's, you know, final verdict. Bad gun. It's, 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 a, bad it's gun. a bad gun. There's, there's, there's really... There's really no no nice way to say it. It's uh, you know, so, so if this thing was being sold, in you know being manufactured in the U.S., let's say if it was being manufactured in the U.S. and they weren't using a bunch of takeoff G36 parts and it wasn't being made in some sort of pretentious, oh, you're, it's just the closest thing to an HK sort of way. I bet these would be like five hundred dollar guns in the U.S. Think about it. Think about the machined parts in here. You compare compare the machine parts in this to something Keltec makes, something High Point. Because guess what, Keltec's. Are AR18 bolts, right? Like, w- 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 with a long stroke piston, so they're, in my opinion, better. Right. It's the same amount of machining complexity, and you wind up paying. What? How much do these things cost? Like three grand. It, it's a lot of money. And then for, for a while, of course, SLAs are coming into the country again now, so I think yeah. that's lowered the price a little bit. But I know, you know, for a while, you had to find your own SL8 on your own, and then it was like two grand on top of owning an right. SL8 to have a real. G36. Yeah. And of course, I didn't pay that. I have a good friend who um, actually sold me this one for a very good price, specifically because I told him I was going to tell everybody what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to hold yeah. my tongue. Yeah. Uh, and and he was cool enough to let me do that. But this... Yeah, man. This shit just sucks. Like, it's I... Not the best. I have a lot of guns that I... that, like, don't shoot well but that I enjoy shooting, and I don't like shooting this gun. At least for me, right? If this thing costs $500, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't hate it because it's, it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's ostensibly a $500 gun that they want $3,500 plus for. Right. Because like... It, okay, no, hold on. Let's be real. Current market, right? Let's think of what's the cheap... The cheapest AR-18 derivative is a kel Yeah. It's going to be the PLR-16. Yeah. And that's, what, six, seven hundred bucks? Right. So... There is no mechanical distinction between this and that. Right. Short piston. Sure, short piston. Okay, add a hundred dollars. Keltec makes all of these injection mold, glass filled polymer, all that shit. It's the same. It's screwed together, even. <laughs> they use nicer screws. Um, sorry, guys. It's worse than a Keltec for a lot more money. There is no reason for it to cost what it does. And then, and then, like the weird thing is, like there's these people that it's like, oh, but it's it's, it's cool, it's classic. Why? Why? From where? Yeah. What, what great military victories what, were won with this? What made you th- like? Is, is is I guess it's in some movies. Like it's some sort of a bad guy gun in some movies, but like they're probably they're probably worse movies for the fact that this is the bad guy gun and they didn't pick like a good bad guy gun like a Draco. Yeah. Or a Walther MPL. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good. Bernadelli. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to shoot it, but uh, that's it for the talkie piece. Oh, and one cute thing we forgot to mention about this one is uh, if you don't shoot brass case, it locks up irretrievably, which is great. As you know, they always say, if it don't stealing shoot, you don't brass it. be fun. We'll see if this thing is still as bad as I remember it. God, it feels so airsoft. Watch out! I got BBs headed your way! The sight's rotating itself, so I have no sight picture anymore. No, it did lock open, which it is rare. Let's see if it holds Let's open. See. Oh! Oh! Look at that! <laughs> 
What? It worked like it was supposed to. Yeah. I really, really like that the handguard goes out far enough you can you can do a cool guy grip on it. Yeah, it costs to. It helps the it helps the controllability, but oh good lord. Again, m much like the scar I'd say even, when that bolt bottoms out at the back, it moves you significantly. Yep. And uh, uh, again, like for as much as the gun weighs, it shouldn't shouldn't move that much. Like you compare this to like a three hundred dollar PSA special AR, it shoots smoother than Right. I mean this is probably three hundred dollars worth of happy meal, so <laughs> <laughs> I guess I shouldn't be too surprised, but like come on man. Right. It, it, it's like everything that people complain about with piston guns, this thing exemplifies, where it's just sharp. Well, at least it's not as bad as the 416. It's not as bad as the 416, but <laughs> <laughs> that's another episode. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Fuck me!